I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, public input statement. First public input session is a 15, or wait, we're doing 21, 21 minute <laughs> session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. A second input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. Each speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents but the board chair may give non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Please note that statements having certain subject matters such as personnel cannot be made during these public input sessions. Do we have any public input? No. Okay. Minutes of October 21st. I can trust you guys that I can't get it open. Say that again. So I will trust you guys that I can't get it open. Oh, really? I read it. Well, I wasn't here. Oh, so I'm going to make up. It's just open. Do you have a, cor a correction, Ella? Uh, just, it looks like maybe a misspelling under employment. Nomination of Jason McCann is a uh, case manager middle school. And is it supposed to be Denise Manor? Spell B I N. Is that her correct spelling? Or is it I think it's the good spell. Which what? It's B E I N S E. That's wrong. Okay, okay. yeah, it's, thank you. It's a little bit. Things are important. Yeah. Anybody see anything else? Somebody want to make a motion? Well, actually, <laughs> is, I'm wasn't here. Is there anybody else who wasn't here that week? Okay, then we can vote on it. Yeah. I will make a motion. We accept the minutes of October 21st as written. Second. Somebody to second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Five. I'm abstaining. <clears throat> donation. Okay, we um, received a $500 donation, dollar donation from Bubba Fries for our backpack program. So we'd like to thank them for their continued support of that program. They were a frequent contributor last year and uh, much appreciated. Thank you. We don't, don't need Are to approve we, that? We do need to yeah. approve I'll because it was 500. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept that. I'll second. Are you second? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Six <laughs> All right. Election results and building committee update. Okay. So why don't we just start with the results and oh, thank you. Give it a, a brief committee update. We're also having a facilities and finance committee meeting next week. So between both committees, we'll have some uh, real good information to share out. So um, we need to certify the vote. Uh, so, and that, that will need an action after I read through the results. Okay. So I'm just going to read affirmative and negative by town, and then we needed a motion to accept that and move it ahead. So for Berwick, um, we had 702 in the affirmative and 1,273 in the negative. In Lebanon, we had 599 in the affirmative and 823 in the negative. In North Berwick, we had 573 in the affirmative and 1,055 in the negative. So the total of affirmative was 1,874, and the total in the negative was 3,151. Somebody 
you want to make a motion for that? To, to certify the vote? Oh, um, well, I'll, I'll, make vote. Vote. Okay. I'll make a motion to certify the vote. Second. 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 All those in favor? That would be 6-0. So just, I can start with a, just a quick um, building committee meeting and then you, you can jump in. Um, so we met yesterday, so the day after the vote, with um, the architects and we just did spend the committee. So we had some representation from um, North Berwick, uh, a resident from North Berwick, a resident from Lebanon, and there was no resident from Berwick. I don't think there's been one on the committee for a while, right? Okay. Somebody at the beginning and they dropped down. Okay. Yeah. And so we talked through just some next steps. So our um, architectural firm, Alan, gave um, some overviews of ideas of different things that we could pursue and look at. Um, and it sounded like there was a fair amount of support and conversation around uh, bringing the building of Lebanon forward in of itself to a vote in June. That was uh, pretty much the direction, uh, but there were some bigger questions too about we still have space, space, space issues in North Berwick, we have space issues at Hussey. Um, so Travis and Nancy, I don't know if you want to add additional information or? Well, I wanted to know how much. <laughs> it's going to go up between what the estimate we have now and it when we were in June, and they're going to get back to us on that. Yeah, because the the prices that we had currently for that school and for all these individual school factored in the fact that all three schools would be done at the same time. So the potential for our, the price that we had classified for Lebanon to go up because now it's a one and, one and done project. Plus, now you're looking at a reassessing the values of what it costs for construction. So. They were directed to go back to their, what do they call them, their estimators, uh, estimators, estimators yeah. to figure out what it would cost us to do a one, one and done project. And we're waiting to hear back on what that cost is going to be before we go forward. And then the other two schools are just going to have to become portable cities, I guess, <laughs> because they're going to run out of room. So. Yeah, I just had something to add to that, that I had asked about looking at the population numbers again. Um, just to make sure that what we might be planning for is actually going to be enough, not just for a couple of years, but for a good while. Yep. So we're going to be getting those updates as far as new buildings, but also as Travis pointed out, you know, what's selling, what's up for sale, who are, who, what's the population moving in? Are they families with children when, when like, you know, maybe two adults are moving out? You know, what's the profile coming in so we can really look more closely at that? as well as enrollment figures, because the last time we had it done, there was some question yeah. of validity. Yeah. yeah. Especially the 10-year and the 20-year mark. And, and they're the only ones that do that? We can't find anybody else well, that does that? Alan said he had some ideas, yeah. so we oh, did we reach out again today to see what those ideas are for different groups or, or companies that may do that, so we'll get that information. I'd be curious what we did for Hanson, because I remember it was based on one and a half, uh, each house was based on one and a half kids at that point. But like, where did they get that from? Yeah. Right. I think it's also important that we look at other options of not just bringing Lebanon forward, but other options because we are we have um, capacity issues, especially in North Berwick. Yes. Uh, no matter what happened at the vote, we were going to have to put what is it four? Four like, classrooms. The, the four modular classrooms next year. For Lebanon, I mean, sorry, for North Berwick. Um, I think we need to do an assessment on our, our buildings and what we have for room. I know we've done it before. I know we looked at it, I think it was last year, we looked at the Milton School of trying to possibly move up the third grade yeah. class. And we decided as a board that since we couldn't bring up the whole third grade class, we were we would keep it as is because it was a 50 50. You could bring up half the third grade right. class, but it doesn't make sense to bring up half of a grade. So, but I, I know there are some, I don't think there's enough, but I think there are some avenues that we should at least look at on whether or not we can condense some rooms, um, you know, some rooms that aren't being utilized 
all day long, condense those into multiple uses, and maybe open up enough rooms to get more a, a, a grade at a different school to kind of absorb some of this. But I mean, we're looking at a five-year process now. Oh yeah. By by before all three of our schools are done, if not. Oh, I, if if that, I would yeah, say, if, if, if we're only going to do one school at a time. Yeah. And in five years, there's going to be substantial growth. Um, and we had talked in the meeting, you know, about how to make sure it's clear to people what the increase is. That way, there aren't just numbers flying out here, there, and no one's really sure. And people waiting on maybe getting things late in the mail, all of that. What I'm driving at is the ballot. Is can we put it right on the ballot? You know how on the back of the flyer it actually shows the increase for each town. I mean, that way, but know. even then, people, if they see that when they get to vote, you mean, if they, they probably have made up their mind. And I would wonder if that would, if it would be too late to put it on there to. Mm -hmm. to I just figured in case somebody was misinformed, yeah. you know, they went in and like, I don't want anything to do with this because it's going to be going up this much. And then they see and they're like, oh, you know, that's what it is for the first year. More like that, but we can. I mean, we talked about strategies and stuff. We can just make sure we get it out there a little bit better this time. But I was just looking at. I really want. I just want everybody to know. You want accurate information. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I think we kind of shot ourselves in the foot. If we didn't. We didn't do a great job at PR, and we didn't rebuttal. Well, we tried these. though. How yeah, many? We, how many we had meetings, meetings did we do? Yep. Yeah. Yep. We had meetings that we didn't have. No the team. participation level was very little. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's when, a lot going on, and I think participation rate is so little. You need to get the information out there some other way. Correct. And I think Facebook, Facebook hurt us. I'm not gonna lie. Facebook, mm -hmm. Facebook hurt oh, us. Sure. Oh, definitely. And we didn't, and we didn't rebuttal any of it other than. Well, you know, uh, I considered it, but I didn't really want to throw myself to the wolves. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> because yeah. I just figured that would be. Yeah. I think that we have to um, strategize on how to use social media better for ourselves. Yeah. For sure. I, it's really hard, and we're always trying to sort of stay above the fray so to figure out how to. How to manage it in a better way. So that's some work that we maybe do. there could be like just an informative page where it's not anything where people are going back yeah. and forth. Yeah. Well, we have the superintendent's Facebook page. I don't know if Steve gave you all the access, but we had he had a page that he used. Uh, I think when I looked at it the other day, I think it hadn't been used since eighteen. But there yeah, was, we, there was so a superintendent's Laura, Facebook page. Laura used there. to watch things for us, Laura Cashel. And um, try to put some, try to counter some of that stuff. Um, so when she came on board, he didn't need like that to do it anymore. So, but I think I think it's we we need to yeah we need to jump into the Facebook world yeah, yeah. the you know the mm -hmm. Twitter world. I know we have Twitter out there. I, the athletic I will use the athletic part for example. They created a Facebook yeah. page and it has been phenomenal yeah. with you know. Putting information out there that everybody's jumping on board and agree. Uh, we've got to get more activities of that. But we have to remember there are a lot of people out there in the community that don't have kids in the school. Yes. Yeah. And they're oh, not yeah, going to tune into a Facebook account to see what's right. going on. You need to use snail mail and mass mailings like we did for the booklet on the referendum and, and get information out. We're having some trouble. We have to figure out the logistics of. The mailings because I didn't give in each of our after. accounts, like it feels like fifty percent of them didn't get to where they needed to get to. Mm -hmm. So I've got to figure. I that actually out. received mine so, on Saturday. Have so many two mailings, or do you just are you sending it out to all families that you have listed in their address? We send it to every resident in the district, yeah. all residents. Uh, King is you? Who's sending it? The district. Yeah, we send it. I don't know if you guys like hire somebody to you know print it or whatever. We do hire somebody to print it out. Yeah. But you guys are responsible for right. yeah. yeah. right. yeah. okay. yeah. Kate, did you say something? I just said that I received my brochure on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I, I got mine a week after. Yeah. Okay. And they really did go out in plenty of time, so that was like, like way ahead of time. So, so I figure that out. do you guys take a trip to the post office? Yep. Yeah. So they, we know why would they sit there in the post office? 
don't have an answer to that question. Well, so for the North Berwick ones may go to the post office here, but they actually get fed out through Sanford. Yes. Well, all of them do. Right. And well, no, so uh, we 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 to we South. Lebanon does, goes to Sanford. Yeah. So we back. bring them to the post offices. I mean, you know, at some level, I'm not really sure how to, unless we limit them ourselves to each and every one. <laughs> so we've got to figure it out. Like, there's got to be a way, right? Doesn't make any sense. Well, we have the Remind app. Yeah. That, but that only touches. That's typically students, student, right? Parents, but, yeah. So maybe we need to look at creating an a email <laughs> that people can subscribe to, right? As well. That, that hits mm -hmm. most I mean, almost everybody has email access now. There are still some out there that don't, but most everybody has email access. Most everybody's on social media. Not everybody, but most people are. Yeah. So, did you have we replaced or not replaced the person that was doing the PR? Not yet. It's um, hard finding candidates. No, I know. Yeah, hard finding anybody. Yeah, yeah. that's the problem. <laughs> that one come through. I like. I didn't know it came up. What? It didn't come through. Parse. It didn't come through. She, it wasn't a, um, a classroom teacher, so it didn't necessarily yeah, need to come through for action. Yeah. Well, she wasn't full time. Was she? Well, no, she did partially. She did. She did part of the, the Tritonga Mobile, and the other part of her piece. Um, it's. I don't think it ever did out after four years, but uh, she did. So it's, it was. It considered a clerical position. Um, well, I'm wondering if it would be aimed for that, but changes to contact somebody to help us mm -hmm. go get through the mailing. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a big problem because our budget book is going to go that way. Yeah, and if that doesn't yeah. go out. Well, I mean, if, yeah. if families and yeah. community members don't get that. Yeah. And, and we have a, we're on a timeline for that process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A pretty strict timeline. Right. So we can't really say, let's get it out. Yeah, you can't put it out. Right. 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 And, <laughs> and, it, and it typically hasn't been a big issue. I mean, there's, so this was pretty unique in terms of the fact that so many people didn't get receive it because like, we've we sent we've mailed out our our town you know our, our budget booklets for years and years and years and we have a timeline when it has to be out and it has to be in the post office in order mm -hmm. to get to everybody and it really hasn't been major issues there have been a lot of ones found in the trash as people are leaving which is like breaks your heart but other than that i haven't had a lot of negativity about it not being received now the other thing could be this was such a, uh, a more of a hot ticket that more people realized they didn't have it because this was a plus up. I think the this November election was well attended anyways based on question one. So it could be that just more people were aware. Not I, I don't know. There's I think there's a lot going on with it. So but we will can, we will keep working. We do it. Get this. <laughs> Right, so we'll have facilities and finance next week. Some of what we're going to be discussing at that point are some of those other pieces about space and looking throughout the district and what can we do for space. As, as, as we know, North Carolina is above capacity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we mentioned right now one of the things that Kevin discussed is that a board decision right now we want to wait till after that facility meeting I think after the facilities okay. that would be good yeah okay so we all set with that okay weekend building use so we're just circling back that um, from last time because we've had a lot of requests to use mm -hmm. uh, the facilities on the weekend especially some of the youth athletics for the winter and um, as well as our theater, you know, um, we have Cinderella coming up for from our students, but we also have a diff different kinds of groups that want to use the space. So um, we've talked with Kevin Moore, head of maintenance, and we've talked to um, the head custodian here, and it seems like we're in really good shape here as far as building use, like on Saturdays or Saturday nights for events. Um, for the for the elementary schools, we. Um, Feel pretty pretty confident that we'll be able to get coverage throughout as far as custodial staff. However, 
if somebody gets ill or if something comes up, we may need to cancel some things. So we will open that up. Uh, we do have some requests, and so we'll go through the requests as they came in, and we'll be responding to those requests. We also uh, will likely charge a fee for that because we are paying a custodian well, to don't come we in. Well, do have a fee schedule? We I have guess. a fee schedule, but sometimes it hasn't been used in the past. If um, like a staff member is particip helping or participating with that, but because we're going to have to hire somebody over right, right. time, yeah. Uh, for cleaning um, and sanitizing and, and safety, we will uh, charge for that. So we'll get that fee out to those groups when we when we contact them. Are we going to allow spectators? We both, we both take a breath at the same time. There was a conversation today with athletic directors and, and high school principals, and they were talking about just this very topic. And one of the things that came up, but I don't believe it's been 100% vetted, is home, a home game, home, home fans audience, only. home fans off. Yeah. Um, there's been different talk about, um, do you just have each child get six tickets? There's all kinds of talk. So there's a lot of talk, and um, they haven't really come down to a decision on that yet. My hope would be that whatever is modeled and what we have to follow at the high school, we can just say trickle down. Well, that sounds like yeah. Yeah. Was, what about the yeah. direct aspect as well, right. like all these other agencies right. that are going to use it. Right. And, you know, because I, I know we got theater coming up with mm -hmm. the events going on, we right. got sports coming up. So right. We're, we're kind of in a little bit of a wall right now. We are, right, but it's hitting. It'll be, it'll be soon. soon. Yeah, November 22nd. Yeah. We meet with athletics again tomorrow yeah. to talk about Because yeah. some of this is. So, for instance, volleyball has been playing all fall yep. inside with masks and all of their spectators' masks. Yep. I've been to a couple of the games. hasn't been a big issue. I haven't seen anybody not complying, and the athletes are playing with masks, too. Mm -hmm. But when you get into the larger conversations with the conferences, there are athletic directors who are feeling like they can't monitor masks on their spectators, like a basketball game or all those kinds of things. Then there's the other question of um, wrestlers who have such direct contact, how is that going to be, you know, and wrestling with them out, I don't know. So there's a lot that still needs to be ironed out that it's not really, I think it's prudent for us to like wait and, and, and see what people are doing together, and we meet with the superintendents in the morning as well to figure out what the next steps are. Because, you know, again, it's going to be one of those very contentious things. I wish that... SMAA could come up with a set of we guidelines totally that all yep. schools follow. Yep. We would appreciate that we a would. great deal. Yep. Uh, I hope that that's possible. Uh, that's why they have not stepped into that role. But I just wish every state would be the same. Yeah. yeah I, I have a teacher friend that's in Dover, and they don't do they do math. Yeah. But that's it. Yeah. Right. They're if you're in close contact, contact yeah. you're that's just your problem. you're you're, yeah. you're told you're in close contact. Yeah. But that's it. Yeah. There's no quarantine and there's no there's no nothing. So and in Massachusetts and Vermont, they require all their athletes to be vaccinated. So it's like everybody is very different in terms of what they're doing. Because and some of that we find out because um, we have the wrestling tournaments that typically we run, and so they've got it, so it's oh yeah it's so, <laughs> so convoluted. Yeah, totally agree. But on the other side of it, just to talk about the, like, Burke Rec has asked to utilize the facilities. We wanted to make sure that you guys are okay as long as we were able to charge for the custodials and we have the people to cover it, that you're okay with us doing that. Mm -hmm. We kind of feel like it's important for the, for the, kid, the younger kids to be able to get in. And well, it, it, so I was, a part, I was a part of, well, not really, like, in contact, but I was heard some things of the base basketball tryouts that they had last night that there's a lot of kids that are really green because they didn't play last year. Of course. Right. Right? Like they, yeah. there's a transition year and right. they're yeah. gonna be so it's just gonna Turn progressively like hurt yeah. Yeah. throughout as the years yeah. keep going on. So yeah. I I mean I wanna see us get as much activity in these schools as possible. But I've been playing baseball since day one of COVID. Yeah. And we've had See, it's it's minimal different. issues. But you're outside. It's yeah. different, yep. you know. Yep. But it, but there's all the kids are all been active throughout. Yep. Yep. Right? Uh, but nope. I, I think it's just, just as long as these programs understand that if there's no custodians, yeah. 
custodian, they'll right. have to be canceling yes. this. Um, yes. this you know. Yeah, and that's and so those are some of the parameters that we'll set out there mm -hmm. so that it's clear. Um, because we do want our kids to be in school, we want our young ones to be doing, you know, doing sports. And, and do the people have to reach out to you guys or reach out to the school admin? It if goes you want to, to the gym time. It, it goes to the schools, but we'll, we'll meet yes. like tomorrow. We're meeting with athletics to set up the parameters because right now, um, Laura, the assistant athletic director, is, is getting direct requests from Berg Rack and from folks. So, She'll meet with us. We'll work it through and we'll go from there. Okay. Educational program. My favorite part. Okay. Let's <laughs> we'll start with some highlights here. Good. Maddox Jordan uh, finished seventh at the state cross country meet and will be going on to the New England meet later on this year. Josie Chadbarn, our field hockey coach, has been named the 21. 21-22 SMAA Field Hockey Co-Coach of the Year. Our football team has their semi-final game. It's Friday night against Portland. Portland, yeah. We haven't yeah. been yeah. in the semi-final for a really long time. This is mm -hmm. wicked exciting. <laughs> Anthony Prack, who um, received a commendation for the National Merit Scholarship Program due to outstanding academic progress, uh, promise on the PSATs. Uh, that was highlighted in the Sentinel recently. And then Carly Cruz, who is, I believe she's a junior, uh, is working- She's actually a senior. Is she? I just looked at her. That's okay. the reason I know. That's all right. She's a, <laughs> I remember way, way back when. She remembers her as a kid back when. Um, and she, for her national honor, one of her service projects, she was working on the tennis courts down at the middle school. Mm -hmm. We've um, worked and has done a tremendous job cleaning them up. So uh, what we're going to do is put some money in our budget, in the uh, maintenance budget, to help do some resurfacing, uh, getting the nets in, getting the lines in, and filling in some of those cracks so they can be used. Uh, uh, but be awesome. tremendous, yeah. I played there, I was like, I felt like I was chasing the tennis ball all over the place. Yeah, well, there, yeah. there's I a... Pick up, I want some of their help. Yes, <laughs> they're excited. The athletic department is excited because they have kids that want to start with yeah. So that's that's awesome. And the other part were the courts that um, probably you guys wouldn't even know. That those were grant funded many 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 years ago. So we can't just let them fade away. They actually they actually will take our money back if we let those. Really? Yep. Yeah, if you don't maintain them, they 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 tell you that you need to return the, the funds mm -hmm. even after all those years, and they check up. Because it, it, it happened probably three years ago, we got a just it's one of those things that just comes in, and they're like, "So, how's this? How's this project? How's this project?" And then one of the projects was the tennis courts from the Lord twenty five years ago. That was a while ago. Yeah. Mm. So we're like, when the high school was there. Yeah. So let's. Uh, so our our we were excited that there was kids that are interested, and um, Aaron's you know doing all the legwork to say, "Okay, let's start a team." You know, so that'll be fun. So a couple other highlights, um, or just things that we want to just share with you. We uh, have heard that recently that because we're sending out the COVID letters, which are appreciated, some of the problem is, is that they're coming in and everybody's expecting those letters, so they're not reading them. or So then they're missing letters that are coming out from the schools because we're sending one, two, three times a week, we're sending letters home. So what we just wanted to run by uh, for you is changing the method of notification so that when things are coming out from the schools, they won't have all these from us, from the central office on COVID cases. So what we are proposing is doing a dashboard on the web page and having it updated in time, in real, like in real time. And on that, that dashboard, you can look at it so it can show a graph, but it also can show numbers. And then the letter, you know, that co that community letter that always goes out that says, these are the symptoms, monitor your, yourself or your child. Um, and that way people can look at it whenever they want, and that you can look at it by school. It's already on the, the um, we have it up on the web page anyway, if you want to take a look at it. But 
it, I think it will cut down on the overload of communication. So will the phone calls still be made? No. Well, so the, well, the two things. Yes. The, the close contacts will be contact. Yes. You right. will be contact. Right, right, right. Yeah. But every single human attached to Noble mm -hmm. will not be contacted. <laughs> so like right now, it goes out to everybody right. who's on the list. And it's um, it has become just a major you know, I do it. The only thing I is, so I get the lead. I, 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 I didn't say that. I did, I did yeah. it. I get it. Four times, I yeah. did it. Five times, yeah. because yeah. I did it. Well, you've got it. Ten, I get it. It's, right. like, it's crazy. Yeah. What, what, the only problem is, like, so it doesn't affect this personal, this this family, this child. Mm -hmm. But how are they going to know that they, I don't know. So the dashboard is, uh, so. The MSCD 35 has been doing this since the beginning, really. They just have a dashboard. And Sanford has a, a dashboard, too. Really? Yeah, yeah. Kittery does as well. Yeah, because it just was, like, that was their way of handling it at the very beginning. Um, so this would be a change for us, but I think with the um, the ongoing reality of the world we live in. So they would still get them from the individual schools, just not the ones that you send up. They would get, the, the close contacts would get their letters. Right. The other notification, would, they would have to look at the dashboard. Yeah. Right. And as you, I don't know if you can, if you've pulled it up, but um, you can see it based on school. Yeah. Isn't when we were sending the notifications out? Um, well, we've only had a couple at Hanson recently, but uh -huh. wasn't that separated from Lebanon Elementary? Last year we did. Okay. Last year. We you, sometimes we do yes, Could but sometimes if it's in both, we would just put Lebanon slash Hanson. It, so it's up as Lebanon slash Hanson in here. It, that's why I was asking if it's if it's not too hard. Can you leave them as separated? Okay, yeah, we can. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Sure. I know I look at it kind of like oh, we just had one at Hanson. You know, got to be more diligent. You know, just checking specifically on which school. Yeah, I think that's what make a lot of people happy if we transition to this. Okay. Uh, but we have to send out a letter to tell everybody. We need to send a communication out tomorrow. Yeah. So in that communication, we will show this. I would this. send out a separate communication. Okay. So if you send out the one for tomorrow sure. for our cases, okay. it's going to be right. okay. yep. cases. Okay. It's another cases one. All right. Move it on. So I would send okay. out another one, a separate thing okay. that says we're well, changing the way just, we're doing it. Maybe we just. So, so my fear is that you'll delete both of them without listening to them. So maybe just one goes out about the change yeah. and then the information yeah. well, is updated Correct. on the maybe website. Correct. Do the phone call and change, well, can you change what the phone call says and make it like about a change in the way okay. we're notifying sure. you or yeah, something like, like Robert's on the phone. I was going to say, like Robert, Robert's he's on. the one that does it all the time. Hey, pay attention, pay attention. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's him make the change. Yeah, my kids, they look, it's the school again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Right. So, yes, we, we, we can prep that voicemail to be something different. So, yeah, not the same. Letter, just, yeah. And yeah. then yeah. in our November um, newsletter that goes out, we'll put it in there again as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. I think that will yeah. help uh, with just for families. I, yeah, I yeah. think it'll make a lot of people happy. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. it's, it's just constant. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, so it's, right. And the nice thing about this is that um, it has the, if you can't see it, it has the little mm -hmm. colors for each school, but it also, if you hit new accessible data, it's actually the actual data. Now, we're not going to go back. We're going to go forward, starting October 25th, basically, is when we're going to start. Um, so we're not going to, like, populate the past. But we have those numbers. We, have we do have that, that info, but yeah, right, right. I think it, it's just a lot. Right. And then um, next board meeting, we will have a student rep attending now that things have settled down. Uh, we're just uh, in final conversations with one um, a student, and uh, it's a junior, uh, so hopefully two years on the, on the school board for that. So that will be um, good to welcome in a student. Let's see, we always talk about attendance. So student attendance these past two weeks have ranged from 78% present, percent present to 96% present. So again, when you look at one of our smaller schools that keeps coming in with some COVID information as we send out those letters, they're the ones that are, have uh, some of the lower in-person attendance. Um, and our staff is ranging from 91 to 97% in 
and attendance. And the last thing is we've been contacted by York Hospital to um, have them work through our buildings similar to, for vaccine clinics, similar to what we did this past spring. We had two clinics at the high school. Um, so they've reached out just asking as a community service to be able to offer that in, in a building. And they recommended uh, being housed out of the middle school because it's 11th year olds down. So having it, most schools are going, starting it at the middle school so that then parents at the elementary schools would bring their children in. It would not be something done during the school day. It would be after school hours like we did with the high school one as well. <laughs> but okay. that adds that it falls me if it's at the middle school on the outside aspect. So we gotta figure out that aspect. Four, four o'clock start is what we were thinking. That's fine. We just there's, okay. there's other shoes that would have to go into play. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. And, and it, standby I, people that have to be yeah. yeah. So we don't we have been going through EMA. Okay. Yeah. Which is we can help, I think. Right. So yeah. this is yeah. And we may actually do both eventually, Travis. Like we've done, we've done different clinics with like EMA has done it with us as well. York's the first one that they they were Johnny on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, there are there are some schools that are doing it during the school day, and we're not touching that because <laughs> you know, we yeah. haven't had enough distractions yeah. in the last yeah. two years. So, so we're just the, no, we want you to bring your parent. Your parents need to bring you and, yeah. and make sure that everybody is. Yeah. Eyeball to eyeball and he gets it. So can you get further in this? Can you please let me know so yes. I can be involved in the other sure. aspect of my career? Sure. Yeah. We're gonna have all that activity going on with the middle school. We've got to make sure I have staff in the middle school. Yeah. Okay. Is it just um younger kids for the vaccines or do you think they're doing adult boosters while they bring in all the parents or with them kind of thing yeah i don't think they they haven't mentioned boosters at all but that is a good question for yeah. us to ask yeah, yeah we can follow up because mm -hmm. some clinics are doing that they're doing the levels and then they're also saying if you need a booster um again i think ema has been more on that than this, uh, but we haven't asked that conversation right. that question so and those are our updates that's it Okay, employment. We have two retirements, and we don't need to take action on these, but I wanted to just bring them forward for recognition based on the longevity of these retirements. So the first one is Rhonda Batchelder, a longtime educational technician, literacy um, position, literacy lab, and um, at Lebanon Elementary School, 24 years there. And the next one is Sandy Gray, Puzzy School. She's been an educational technician for special education for the past 25 years. So Sandy's finishing up on the 19th, and Rhonda finished up uh, two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. So uh, we just want to acknowledge publicly our appreciation for their dedication and service to our students. Good. And then we do have a resignation, and that's Shauna Street, who is the North Berwick Elementary School Guidance Counselor, um, and we do need a motion on that. So I'd like to make a motion. I make a motion we accept her resignation. Somebody to second. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> Thank you. There's seven now. Yeah, I, I got her out of here. <laughs> it's like, oh. Public input. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> it's, <zero. laughs> it's nice to see you, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. Uh, others. <laughs> I knew um, you were always having others. I do, and I'm going to be the evil one that drops it. What are we doing with uh, snow days this year? Oh, good. That's yeah. actually good that you brought it up. What are doing with what? Snow, snow days. days. We're snow almost days. there. I mean, it was frostbite right. in the window. Yes. Right. Sure. Okay. So yeah. we're almost there. Right. So we were hoping that it would be something really easy to say that we could have remote snow days. And we, um, yeah. we are having trouble with that because of the school nutrition policies and guidelines. That's a, that's a portion of it. Last year, they gave us grace 
to be able to say, okay, you can send home like a shelf-friendly shelf um, food for students, and that could, like we would send it out and it, it could last for a while, shelf-stable food. Um, this year, they're not allowing that to happen. So what they have said is you can't give any food out five days prior to a snow day. And if, if it has to be within that time frame, like it, like you can do it four days. But well, it can't be longer. Than. You would have to give up food if we call a snow but day. How do you know when the we snow day is going to be? So to count, like for it to count, count as, as a non-snow day, as a remote day, right? Wow. So yeah. that's almost impossible right now, given the fact that some of these are so up in the air until four o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the right. morning, and with the with the staffing. You know, you can't do it that day. You don't want anybody driving on those days at 4 o'clock in the morning if your plowing isn't done yet or anything like that. So there's really no good answer right now to have a remote day count for a school on an inclement weather day, if that makes See, sense. See, I, I thought the State Department had to approve that anyway. About the whole, you know, right. bag thing right. that we yeah. talked about. Right. Yeah. So they, they've actually said you can do remote, but you have to, you have to provide a meal. In order to do that, in order for it to count as a day, we have to provide a meal. So, which is and we can't send. You're talking about the shelf stable stuff. What about frozen? That way, it can stay in there until needed. So you have to have provide yeah, a milk. Oh, no. You have to provide a milk and some some vegetable and yeah. fresh. Yeah. Like so, it it creates yeah. it creates, it's hard. Um, and they were they were definitely more lenient last year because of the whole situation. Um, and the fact is, is that every every meal is free right now for all students. Um, yes, yeah, it's hard. It's pretty hard. So Abby came to us and said, uh, I don't know how to do this. Like, I don't know how to make this work for what we're talking about. Um, and honestly, we don't need it. <laughs> also, the whole, the rest of the whole state's going to be in the same place. Yep. Yeah, they're in the same place. Yep. Yeah, the state is so frustrated sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. They get rid of some of these guidelines that just let us be yeah. our state. Yeah. yeah, I agree. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Right. So we got the reality. We can do remote learning. Let's let the kids. Yeah. Let the kids learn. Yeah. yeah. So there is that, and and we don't disagree with you, Travis. I think I think the first few are it's going to be okay. The problem that we're going to have is if we have a lot of snow days because yeah. we don't know what the weather's going to be. Right. right. Yeah. We're going to have to revisit this. I mean. And say, okay, how can we make this work? And I think that there's other problems similar to I think um, Abby sent out sort of the the troubles that she's been facing this year in terms of the supply and demand. That's another piece of this whole puzzle as well. Is like what you can get in that's shelf stable that can be sent out. And then there's like we even talked about one of those milks that don't have yes. to like be refrigerated. Oh, and the little uh, ones. Yeah, yeah, we like that's. She was going to look into it, but I don't know that they were available. For everything is in a spot. So, well, somebody. Well, how are you going to deliver them on a snow day? Right. Well, that's the thing. Is the the, the piece if would be can we send those out? If we know that we're going to have a snow, like you know, we know there's going to yeah. be a blizzard. Can we send things out two days before? Um, but that it just doesn't always work. But yeah, it's crazy because you have to. You're planning that you're in school. These are the meals, and then to have to switch it to something yeah. completely different. And not knowing until right before that is. Yeah. It's like you have to decide on your snow day 48 hours ahead. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which sometimes it's, sometimes it sounds you can like do. It's, sometimes you can. Sometimes sometimes you can. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Right. So I would say stay tuned for adventure and anticipate typical traditional snow days for a little bit. Okay, right. we still budgeted. Not budgeted. Yeah. yeah. Uh, our five days are five days, days. Our five days yeah. in our calendar, right? Yeah. 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 I think we were all hoping that out of the pandemic there would be at least one nice yeah, little one good thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. But like, there's so water rules. So let us, let us let it keep working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to take all snow days away. I think kids deserve some. Yeah. Because you can't tell me that if it's a really home. bad day, they're not going to. And, and we do have school. Some of the parents keep their kids home. Right. Because right. it's bad yes. driving or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, they're not getting their free lunch. I know. Right. Yeah. 
Well, and, and one of the other sides is that we don't, our, our elementary kids don't bring their computers home, so we have to know the last one. Well, you have to have some sort of advanced yeah, right. notice to right. send all of their computers home. Right, and right. the chargers. Yeah. Right, the chargers are a big thing. Yeah, the chargers. Yeah. Okay. That's unfortunate. Kate, did you want to take a moment to talk about the conference? Unmute yourself. Sorry, I needed to get off mute. Um, it was it was a very interesting experience, I have to say. I've gone to um, a number of virtual events for my work, um, but this was this was different. It was unique in that there were um, there was an attempt to really make it feel like you were in a space and interacting with people on in real time. Um, I have some notes that I apologize I haven't cleaned up and I meant to send them out this week, but hopefully I'll get to them tomorrow. And there's also a um, an application you can down, download and you could actually go on and see speakers. You could um, look at some surveys that were taken. Um, so they did a lot of kind of interactive things to break up the day so that it wasn't like you were sitting on a Zoom call for eight hours. You had the opportunity to sort of walk around the site, if you will. Um, and uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions that I could answer for them. No. <laughs> I think your notes. I think your notes will be helpful. Yes. Yeah. And then if you, if you have questions, we can go back and revisit that next next uh, meeting if we could. Thank you. And, and I, I would encourage, I would encourage you to download. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. What did you say, Kate? No. And I and I would encourage you to download the app because. Yeah. Um, it's it's a it's a very unique way to approach a virtual event. That was the day that we had a treatment done across the driveway, yeah. taking power lines and coal. Oh, but we lost the power, and they got to my house and they said, um, "You better go turn off the breaker because the neutral line had broken and all oh. the electricity was coming in on the one line and usually oh. it kills like." Okay. okay, so once I recovered from that, but I did get the handouts and they did. Oh, good. Tape, not tape. Sure. Record it. Yeah. 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 That was helpful. Good. Anybody else have another? Oh my gosh, guys, it's 7.50. Mm -hmm. Do it. <laughs> um, I, I might have another, I, and I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> To break the record. It's because you're home already, Kate. I know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make this quick. So um, the North Berwick Dems had a, a meeting last night. And of course, one of the topics was the school bond not passing. And they would really like to be involved with the school committee and make an effort to get out into the community and talk about the need and how we can get this passed. So I just I just wanted to put that on the table that the um, the Democrat committee in North Berwick uh, would like to help us. So they will be attending our meetings, hopefully right. in coming week, weeks and months, and um, they are more than willing to help. The North Berwick Democrats. They actually attended. Two folks attended. Um, it got a little rough here. They were here to support us. In the crowd, doing the positives. Yeah. Thank you, Kate. Anybody else? Okay, somebody needs to make a motion. Can I make a motion to adjourn? Just like last time. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. All those in favor. <laughs> Except the timing. 7.51. I am oh, so proud of you. My son is good. Thank you very much. You guys. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording.